there are common fruits and vegetables that we eat every day that also have um, therapeutic properties that we may not know about. I had the opportunity to live in Honduras for three years. Um, two of those years, I l worked in a, a mountain clinic. We had a physician's assistant from the America up there. But because of location, and we were working with people that were very poor, and we know that it's better to work naturally with the body, to build it up, we, at times, um, there was a use for um, medications for some. But what we tried to do as much as possible is use natural remedies and things that were available to the people. And it was exciting to me to see all these natural remedies that are available not only in Honduras, but here in the States. For example, in Honduras, we use cabbage a lot. Cabbage has a wonderful anti-inflammatory um, property. It's good for arthritis. And often when I, I do this um, little seminar, I'll ask if there's anyone in the group who has arthritis in the knees. And what we'll do right in the meeting is I'll crush it up. Now, this isn't too professional, but we're going to work with what we got. So I'm just going to crush up the leaf, the outer leaf that's big. And I'm crushing it so I can get the juices, you know, out of the leaf, bring it up. I'm bruising it. And then when you get these outer leaves, it just goes so nicely right over the knee. Yeah, just right over it. And you can secure it with the wrap, um, plastic wrap and some tape. Or, right, you know, cabbage, 49 cents a pound. Um, or um, just use an ace bandage. Now, it's not going to cure someone of arthritis. It won't cure it, but it will help with the pain. It will help with the inflammation. Very good. So you can even try putting it in other areas, um, but it's really great for the knees. On the same topic of arthritis, we have found helpful, um, definitely you can make dietary changes. Going on a vegetarian diet really does help with arthritis, staying away from animal products, and especially sweet. The sugars, even honey, can cause um, arthritic pro problems. I've seen people who've come to our center who have put those away, drinking lots of water and also cutting out the oil. It really does help with their arthritis. Also drinking lots of water, at least eight to 10 glasses a day, and getting exercise. Water is a big thing. It really is. Uh, there's so many good reasons to drink water. And if you're not used to drinking water, you don't like the taste, you can do something like trying um, squeezing lemon in it to give it a flavor, or using maybe like an herbal tea to give it some flavor, and it's hot, so you could maybe do like an iced tea. When I say herbal, I'm talking something like chamomile, mint, that idea, not regular caffeinated tea. Um, with the arthritis, also have found that turmeric capsules is a good anti-inflammatory. It helps with arthritis. And also, you can go to Walmart and buy a paraffin dip. What that is, it's a container that you can plug in, kind of like a crock pot idea. And it, will, it comes with this wax that you melt. And it has mineral oil in it. And you just simply dip, say if you have arthritis in your hands, you dip it into that wax and that heat penetrates. And it comes with a kit, it comes with a plastic glove you can put on and a towel you can wrap around or it has a glove that's a terry cloth glove that just keeps the heat in. You might keep that on for about 10 minutes. Take that off and you can play with the wax. And it's really good to play with it because you're stretching, getting movement in. And when you're done with that ball of wax, you can put it back in your little um, machine because it will heat it enough to disinfect it. You can use that wax again. They will have these um, machines in physical therapy departments, but you can buy one at Walmart for $40. Um, at least it was 40 the last time I checked. And if you have arthritis in areas that you can't dip in the machine, you can take a paintbrush and just paint it over the knee. And again, do the same concept. Just take some plastic wrap and a towel to hold that heat in for some. And it's very soothing. We have um, walk-in people 
um, people who come into our center during the day and they'll get these paraffin treatments and it's very simple to do it will not cure arthritis but it will help with flexibility mobility and it'll help with the pain it, it, it's good so another thing with cabis it's excellent can help with is um, ulcers stomach ulcers we had I can think of one man particularly who came to us in Honduras who had a he was elderly had a bad peptic ulcers that he suffered from for a long time and we told him it was funny my my friend said what you need to do is juice the cabbage and drink about a half a cup of the cabbage juice a day fourth of a cup to a half a cup a day and his relatives started laughing because he lived in the mountain an hour above us. There was no electricity. We didn't even have electricity at the clinic, and they certainly didn't above us. And so that's why they laughed, and they said, we don't have a juicer, and we don't have electricity. And this elderly man said, don't worry. What I'll do is I'll take a rock, and I'll pound it, and then I'll just pour some water over it, and with that will come some of the juice, and I'll work with it that way. We thought, okay, we'll see what happens. Will he do it? And he had to do it every day to get the effect. Sure enough, in a few weeks, he came back all excited saying it worked. It really worked. It, it helped him. His ulcers were gone. And um, it made a big impression on me because here in America, we have blenders, we have juices, juices, we have the convenience, but how often do I can get lazy and not do something consistently and here this is, man is an elderly man who's pounding out to get a quarter cup of juice half a cup of juice out of a cabbage consistently every day I said boy now that's someone who has faith in works right and that consistency and I believe he was rewarded for that that faith and effort okay something else that's um very good. Say, and what's wonderful about the way God made food, say I'm somewhere, I don't have cabbage, I've got carrot. Carrot also can be used as a poultice with anti-inflammatory properties, which is really neat. And you can just shred up the, cap, um, the carrot. When I was in Sweden, I was living there for a bit. We had a health center, and again, another elderly lady had sprained her ankle. First 24 hours, we did ice. But at night, she had problems with her foot swelling. And so sometimes we would make a carrot poultice for her, and she would sleep with that, and that helped with the swelling. Or we would also use a potato. Um, potato can help with swelling. And potatoes are also very good for burns. My um, friend's daughter got off of a motorcycle and got the tailpipe with her leg, got a bad burn, and her mom just right away sliced the potato and put it on that burn and wrapped it. And the burn didn't blister. It just took that pain right out. It was incredible. Um, so you can either take a potato and slice it or shred it and make a poultice. Yep, very good. For burns, and it can also be used for swelling, anti-inflammatory. We, we used it in Sweden with this lady also who had the, the swelling. Along with the cabbage, which reminds me, um, as a, it can help draw out. Um, say, for example, if someone has an abscess, they have dental pain, and on the way to the dentist, say you get in pain and it's Friday and you can't get in until Monday, some things that can hold you over, cabbage can help. Also, clove oil can be very good or sucking on the chocolate tablets can also help take out um, pain. Rebecca. Okay, also she brought up a good point. Um, for styes, um, potatoes can help with a sty. It was funny, and when I was in Honduras, one of the little girls who lived across the street from me got a sty. She was six years old. And I asked Karina, how did you get your sty? And she said, I was looking at the chicken while it was laying an egg, <laughs> and I got a sty. <laughs> I said, oh, bless her heart. <laughs> yeah. Okay, something else. Celery, very good for helping to lower blood pressure. We use this at Wellness Secrets. Our nurse encourages um, our health guests, she encourages them to try to eat five to six stalks of celery. That's a lot. So 
If that seems like too much for them, we try juicing that. And that generally goes down a bit better, and we give them that juice a half an hour before they eat um, their lunch. The celery, good for helping with the blood pressure. Also, what, what can be helpful with blood pressure is garlic. Garlic is wonderful. There's so much that garlic's good for. Um, what we do at our center is we steam five to six cloves of garlic for people who have high blood pressure, and we steam it for two minutes. It gets soft, and it doesn't have that strong, pungent kick that garlic has. Um, your friends will appreciate it. Your spouse will appreciate it. It's, it's can really, and the reason why it helps with blood pressure is it helps thin the blood. Now, if you are on a blood thinner, like Coumadin, um, you would probably want to speak with Dr. Pandit and see, because you don't want to thin out your blood too much. But garlic can be very good. Also, drinking water as well can help thin out that blood and help with the blood pressure. Now, these things what are, is treating a symptom. Gain that blood pressure down, gain to the root cause, as you probably know, is getting lower sodium foods, cutting out a lot of fat, saturated fats, yeah, there's not eating too much salt, exercise, a plant-based diet, and then helps with stress management. Those are keys, getting to the heart issue of um, blood pressure, but things that can help Along the way, garlic is a good one. Garlic also, many of you probably know, helps boost the immune system. When I'm starting to get sick, I'll make my little brew, which is some garlic I'll cut up, and I'll cut up some onion. I use, put oregano in. Oregano, the seasoning, can be very good as an antibacterial and an antiviral. And if I'm having respiratory problems, I'll put thyme in. When I was in Sweden, they used a lot of time um, for bronchitis and respiratory problems. And we would do over there like a teaspoon of thyme to a, a cup of water. But I'll make my little herbal brew and I'll drink that throughout the day and that will just nip a cold right, right at the beginning for me. That's very helpful. Also, Speaking of boosting the immune system and nipping things, if you do hot and cold showers, I'm sure Dr. Pan has probably spoken to you about that, that can help increase the circulation, help boost the immune system when you go three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. Three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. And to know what three minutes is, I sing songs like Happy Birthday to You, or <laughs> a song that I know is about three minutes long. And then that 30 seconds, I don't like cold, so I, those are quick. And what you can do is start with hot and start with tempered or cool. And then get hot again, and you'll be ready for something a little bit cooler. And go to extremes that way. You always finish with cold. But that's very good. Um, if you're getting sinus problems, it can help with that as well. Garlic, there's so much that can be good for... Um, with the children in Honduras, we used to make garlic tea if their immune system was low, trying to give them a boost. But I'd encourage you, do some research on garlic. There is a lot that can be um, done with garlic. Another thing that we did when someone needed a boost in their immune system, we would take something like one grapefruit, one orange, one lemon, maybe two cloves of garlic, maybe a little bit of ginger, and just put that in a blender and make a drink with that, and have someone drink that throughout the day just to give them um, a boost with the immune system. That recipe has different names, rocket fuel, um, <laughs> nature's penicillin, I've heard different names for that. Is there anything we have to worry about in mixing these if you don't remember you know, one that's... My biggest thing that would be caution would be grapefruit for certain medications that you're on. But the good thing is, with most of this stuff, you really don't have to. Um, that's wonderful about these. The only other consideration I'd have is if you use charcoal. You don't want to mix that with your medication, because it could adsorb it. And replace, we do just um, garlic and lemon, blend it up uh -huh. when we get sick. Uh -huh. um, but I'd be extra, extra cautious about using garlic and grapefruit uh, just by themselves. My dad took some. Yeah, so. it's always balance. I had a friend that was trying to be um, aggressive, and he put a, 
head of garlic through his champion and drink that juice. And again, went, went down, came back up. So you've got to be um, careful. But it depends on who you are. I personally wouldn't say that there's a big caution for one clove of garlic to grape juice, grapefruit juice. Oh, no, I was more than Right, so oh, moderation. Onion. Okay, we'll do the onion next. Onion is excellent. There's so much that onion can be used for. Um, we would do, when pe the children were getting colds, immune system down again, sore throats, we would do lemon and honey. And we'd also, at times, chop up, if they had a cough, chop up a little bit of um, onion in it for them. Also, if people are having, when we have people come who have um, congestion in their lungs, we'll make a poultice with onion. We'll saute in a little bit of water and put that over, do a poultice with the onion. We chop it up. And that's very good for helping to open up. Also, onion can be very soothing for an ear infection. Again, on your way to the doctors, because you want to be careful with some of these things you want to get on top of, but say you're not able not to get there right away, some things you can do in the meantime, take an onion, cut it in half, bake it, heat it, and put it right over the ear. Can be very good for ear infection. Also, garlic oil can be helpful. Something else that can be soothing is if you're able to just even get a hot water bottle or put in a light bulb close to the ear, that heat can be soothing, again, as you're getting yourself to the doctor. It's a blow dryer. Okay, blow dryer would do the same concept. The concept is heat. Um, for the children, and I don't know why this worked, but it worked. Um, we would cut up the onion when they had fevers, temperatures, and um, put it on their feet, and it would cause them to sweat and that sweating would help break the fever. Um, so that's an idea there with the onion. Um, lots of healing property in onion, very good. Oh, last one. On the feet, you mean uh, you crush it up? Mm -hmm. And then we held it by the sock, and they would yeah. sleep with it, and it would break their, they would sweat, and it'd break their fever. And for the children, that was an easier way to deal with the temperatures. Um, lemon is the last one, running out of time. Um, lemon, we all know, is high in vitamin C, great for the immune system. Lemon and honey is wonderful for sore throats. And um, in the morning, something nice that you can do for your body is to drink lemon water before breakfast. Lemon is actually very cleansing for the liver. And um, having warm lemon water in the morning is a great way to um, help keep yourself regular prevent constipation, as well as that flaxseed. Flaxseed helps with depression. One study showed that a quarter cup of flaxseed had the same result on bipolar patients as lithium did. One quarter a cup. So um, flaxseed is something that will help with depression, it will help with constipation, and it will help with the heart. So that is something I do try to get in daily. That's good. And, um, and uh, lemon water is a liver cleanse. Yeah, very good for the liver. All right, I got to stop there, but I hope this at least tweaked your interest. And there's so much I can talk about. Take a time too. Last night I gave you that handout on culinary herbs. I think that's so much fun to realize that all these herbs that we use for cooking also have medicinal properties.